if we want to deal with carbon pollution from motor vehicles, and we definitely do, the way we're going to have to do that is to keep the carbon out of the fuel that is put into the automobile. That's called the hydrogen economy, and CO2 capture and storage can facilitate that because we can take uh, sources of energy like coal or oil or renewable energy, we can separate the carbon at these large hydrogen production facilities and store that carbon underground and then supply the hydrogen to the motor vehicles with no carbon in it. Assuming we do go towards a hydrogen economy, it's clear that in the first 50 years of this century, which is when we really have to enable very large cuts in emissions, much of the hydrogen is going to come from fossil fuels because that is the cheapest, easiest route and the volume of hydrogen that can be produced uh, from fossil fuels is vast. There's no point splitting hydrogen off fossil fuels though if you're just going to vent the carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So therefore underground storage of CO2 is intimately related to hydrogen production. To store CO2 indefinitely, it would be injected into rock formations commonly thousands of meters underground. The two main options are depleted oil and gas fields, which by their nature have held fluids under pressure for millions of years, and deep saltwater formations. Many such reservoirs already contain CO2. A great deal of work has been done to understand the movement and reactions of CO2 and the risks involved, as well as to develop a range of techniques for long-term monitoring. Pilot schemes allow these tools to be tested in a real-life environment. The Insala project in Algeria is set up to store almost one million tons of CO2 per year in the saline water beneath a producing gas field. Whilst in Norway, the Sleipner project is storing a similar quantity of CO2 in a saline formation 800 meters below the seabed. The research programs associated with these projects involve academic institutions from around the world and are helping to increase confidence in the concept of long-term CO2 storage. I'm very confident that uh, CO2 storage can be done uh, effectively and safely and, and in fact we have the technology today. We know how to uh, uh, drill wells, we know how to operate facilities for injection, we have reservoir simulators that uh, predict the performance both in the short and long term. We have monitoring technologies that today that we know can detect very, very small amounts of CO2 in the subsurface. 